Welcome to a special introduction of the third day, one of the 50 titles in official selection at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. The third day plays as part of our primetime program, which focuses on incredible series from around the world. My name is Jeff McNutton, and I'm the lead programmer of primetime and senior director of industry and theatrical here at TIFF. Uh, thank you to our audience for joining us. As an organization still impacted by COVID, we need to support our audiences so that we can continue to present films to future generations and preserve diverse and important voices. Uh, just a few housekeeping items uh, for our audience. This story is told in three parts. Uh, you're about to watch episode one uh, from chapter one and an episode from chapter three. Chapter two, however, uh, in the series will be told during a live event in London, which will be broadcast on October 3rd. This series is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Mm. Vote for your favorite films and series at tiff.net slash vote. So without further ado, I am thrilled to welcome the co-creators, Dennis Kelly and Felix Barrett, directors, Philippa Lothorpe and Mark Munden, and actors, Jude Law, Catherine Waterston, and Naomi Harris. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I wanted to get uh, things started by jumping right into some questions, and I thought I'd start with Dennis. Um, Dennis, I'd love to hear about the origin of The Third Day uh, and how, how it came about. Uh, well, Felix uh, approached me. Uh, Felix uh, <coughs> uh, is the artistic director of Punch Drunk. He's that bloke over there. And uh, he approached <laughs> me and sort of this idea of, like, um, you know, making something that would uh, be part TV and part live um, and it, it seemed like a really interesting idea and uh, they, they had a lot of really interesting mythology like they'd already sort of worked out a lot of really interesting uh, mythology and or they'd already they, they'd, they'd a lot of interesting sort of research a lot of interesting sort of folklore um, and what the next the next part really was to sort of try and find somewhere where it could work uh, and that's when we Felix back came up with OC Island and when I went to OC it all started just started happening really i mean the job then was to sort of you know obviously to create characters and uh, situations and uh, you know um write lines that usually helps but um it, it was oc really that sort of made it come together o oc kind of th there's something about that place when you're on it when you cross that causeway you do think you're in a slightly different world it's just like a mile mile from essex but it doesn't feel like it it feels like another planet you know um, and for, for me it was Really, um, I wanted to, to, I long sort of wanted to explore these, explore grief and how grief works on, on people. And this seemed like, you know, once you're there, it ha it's, there's something, you know, grief can be something that isolates you in this way as well and sort of uh, closes you off. I think Jude was saying that earlier, actually, so I'm stealing that from him, but it's so good, I'm going to pretend it's mine. But um, it, it does, it kind of isolates you and that it felt like a perfect place to sort of, tell a story that was uh, centered around grief. Mm. And Felix, you're known for these interactive experiences like Sleep No More that really play with the audience's senses. Um, when you brought this to Dennis, w w did you want to kind of approach it in the same way um, in terms of really playing with, you know what I mean, audiences' emotions and fears and, um, and, and to Dennis's point, grief? Um, I mean, and first of the form part of it, uh, in the same way we sort of break the rules of theatre with our shows, I was curious about how can we break the rules of television? Uh, what happens when the fourth wall, the screen we're watching, collapses in front of us and actually all of is able to actually fall inside the world of that TV? How can, um, how can a sort of, um, what's the liminal space between the real and the fictional? Uh, and how can something you perceive as fiction initially maybe bleed out and an audience start to question, wait a second, is this, is this actually happen? Is this place real? Um, because it's a very, um, it's an amazing sort of space for an audience to be where they're, they're questioning the validity of everything. And they're starting to, to wonder, um, do, is it all created or is it all actually happening? Mm. And I think uh, storytelling on that, on that basis is, um, is um, such a sort of acute starting point. In terms of like production timelines, uh, where did the live experience come into play? Obviously, I mean, production have been challenged by COVID. Um, did that come last? Um, and, and how did you approach the live experience? 
Well, initially it was going to be a music festival live for thousands of people on OC Island. Uh, but uh, now respecting protocols and protecting our audience, we decided to remount it. Initially, actually, there was a point where we thought we were going to have to lose it. And the third day, as envisioned initially, wouldn't be complete. Uh, but we felt actually we need to rally together. Um, and um, all the brilliant people working on it thought this we have an opportunity to almost fight back. The performing arts as a sector is really uh, uh, under the cosh. And um, we have an opportunity to be one of the first projects to actually as theatre makers and as filmmakers, you use that creativity to troubleshoot this and reimagine. So we decided to pivot uh, and change from an audience of thousands to an audience of one, which is just a roaming camera that captures in real time 12 hours of action as it would have been for the live audience. So it's a completely new conceit and uh, very new, and actually we're still hurtling towards it. Uh, it's definitely got the crisp danger of live theatre, but we generally think in and of itself it's actually innovative and it enables the third day as a whole to actually um just to stand up mm. um dennis you mentioned the experience of of going to that island and how it how it really changed things and how it really um kind of was almost like a collaborative process uh in the narrative w when you um arrived um a question for mark and philippa as directors when kind of finding this this place and this island how did the, that change your approach um to directing you go first Mark. wow um well I, I i wandered around it on my own for the first time just really trying to get a a, a, a feel for it i mean obviously the the approach is across this incredible causeway so you have like 20 minute walk across this causeway so you have a lot to anticipate when you get there um uh i thought it was very very peculiar in a in a way that i'd never seen before it felt like a, a little model village in some sort of ways and so, sometimes it looked like a set and that worried me because i thought oh well we're going to try and make something a bit real here you know and other times it felt very wild and sort of uh, and very mysterious so i i guess all those things sort of fed into uh fed into the way that i mean in the end oc is a character in the piece you know it's that it's it's the soul of the world so it's right at the heart of the piece you know so you've got to capture it in some sort of way including all the nature that that, that uh, you know rushes through it as well so it was a you know i suppose all those things sort of bled into how i thought about you know putting that on film what i love about the island um Everything that Mark says uh, absolutely applies to me too, but I thought that what was fantastic about it, in real life it looks like a mythological island. But when you drive across the causeway, it actually looks unreal and real at the same time, and it looks ancient. And that is a very, very wonderful thing for a filmmaker to have. It's like a gift to be able to film there. Um, I come from North the north of England in a very flat place. So I actually love flat landscapes with those massive grey skies. So I felt very at home on OC quite a lot of the time, even though it is very weird. And weird <laughs> things happen. Weird things happen there, for real. <laughs> um, obviously, in terms of two you know, co-directors working on different episodes, um, there's a specific aesthetic and style across it. The island obviously brings a part of that, but um, both of you bring that to uh, the experience as well. Um, how did you create that kind of consistent, cohesive style uh, across the series? Well, I did beg to disagree with you about that, but I don't think there is a, co a distinctive and, and cohesive style because we both, uh, I'm sure Mark would say the same, summer and winter are very different. Mm -hmm. We have a different, two different directors, two different DOPs, two different composers. So. In fact, we were encouraged to make them quite different, different palettes, different different leads. I have Naomi uh, as the, 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 the lead of my trilogy and um, Jude is the lead of Summer. So they have the, the common landscape, but they're actually quite different. What do you think, Mark? Um, well, I think style is normally dictated by the the writing it you know for me it felt like we were going into something which appeared to be like a horror 
movie maybe something that might be sort of familiar but as you get in deeper to this piece it becomes stranger you know and the mythology starts to be unpacked and and that really dictated the sort of style of what you of 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 of, of filming of it uh, the the other thing is that the piece is totally the, the summer is totally told through the through sam's point of view and and as you go deeper into the series it gets closer and closer to sam's sort of perhaps unreliable uh vision of what's on oc what what is you know what that landscape is about so you're sucked further and further into to his singular uh rather disturbed point of view as you go go into it so i think it's that that really determines the style at least of of summer exactly um, it really then, comes from the themes and the writing exactly and for winter it's entirely told through naomi's point of view and the two girls so it has a different feel um and and that's really really exciting and interesting to have in one series and have these different chapters as you described at the beginning that's very innovative and original i think mm -hmm. and mark, mark, just to jump in mark mentioned the writing we also have two different writers uh, you know kit and dean uh, i co-wrote uh, you know they they were uh, uh, big influences on the second block and i co-wrote a couple of episodes of them and so they they so we've got different writing in there as well mm. yeah it really feels like the island is the throughway but to your point the 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 teams that are putting these together uh, are very different and and um yeah have different visions of it um jude um a question for you in terms of um there's many things that can kind of attract uh, an actor to a project whether it's the creators the script the character um relationship say in this case with hbo what sold you on it um early on all of those things mm. Uh, I was actually told about the seed of this idea by Felix uh, something like seven years ago. We talked about it, and, or rather he told me about this idea that he just described to you of um, cross-fertilizing these different mediums, and uh, I was just intrigued. Um, and then you know, seven years later to get a script written by Dennis with Mark and Philippa attached to direct with this brilliant character and then all these wonderful actors joining on. It's, it was a sort of, it was a very easy decision to make. But I'm honest, I underestimated the, um, the challenge ahead. And it wasn't until we were sort of two weeks into rehearsal with Mark that I, I suddenly, suddenly realized that I'd taken on board this, um, emotionally exhausting uh, marathon really which nearly killed me and um uh, so i'm very glad i took part in it but it it was it it, it took a lot out of me if i'm honest um i know it's always easy to say what fun we all had and we did we had great fun i look back on that whole period mm. very fondly with with terrific people collaborators creating something special and and with with more to do you know, with more to do with the live event. But um, it was a piece at heart. I think Dennis's writing is so extraordinary because it delves into dark places, uncomfortable situations and such interactions, but it does it with this extraordinary uh, uh, brush stroke of humanity and humor. Um, but it takes you to places that are that cost, you know, and I would say that that's possibly the experience that people will have watching it. Mm. Philippa, you, you mentioned earlier this idea that obviously there's there's strange strange things on the island that happen um, you know, during the shoot that you know, are controlled, um, but it sounds like there was things that happened that weren't controlled. Can you give examples? Well, it made me sound really silly, but there was a very very strange image of a fish on my door where I was staying, which came every night, and I showed it to Dennis. I saw the fish. I saw it. Was it drawn? Fish. It was drawn. Light. It was a reflection of light, but we couldn't find out where it was coming from. And it was the devil. Image of the fish. Which <laughs> was the it's it was the devil. It was the devil, right? We all know it was the devil. It was. It was the Saxon fish, which Larry gave to Ellie. 
in, oh. in it was the same shape and it had that same pattern on it how did that happen unless it was the gaffer playing a trick on me the fish was about four feet and it was big and shimmering i did see it, it. it freaked me out I can it, tell was you. it was weird i'm so glad i didn't know about that while we were staying <laughs> there. Yeah, and I didn't that crap. I honestly it took don't. about a month before everyone started talking about some weird crossbreed dog fox badger as well do you remember that they all go <laughs> we've seen it and i was sure for a while i was like come on this doesn't exist and then I can't remember someone who said, no, no, it exists. I've seen, you know, and, and then, of course, every bush and every <laughs> tree you're looking at, where's this? <laughs> Probably they had a really funny name for it, the O.C. The OC wolf or the O.C. dog mm. or something, I don't know. Am I the only one who heard about that? Yeah. yeah. No, I had to know. Naomi, a question for you. We've talked a lot about the island, but how did the island help you get into character? Um, if the island is another character within... I mean, the story, which it very much is, um, you're working with that island constantly and, and, and does it help you um, get to where you needed to, to go? Um, I, mean, I think the island is a Marmite island, right? So I was super excited about, you know, going to the island, filming on the island. I thought it sounded amazing. Um, Jude was trying to help me sort of temper that enthusiasm, but I didn't really <laughs> listen to him. Um, and this is, I didn't like pick up on the clues that he was dropping. Um, and I went and I was one of the people who absolutely hated it. Um, <laughs> so I couldn't wait to get off that island. Um, I just, it helped my performance because, you know, I'm supposed to be un very uncomfortable there throughout the whole the whole way through and it was super uncomfortable like i mean i've never experienced such harsh and changeable weather i mean even great britain you know it's like this is the most changeable in terms of weather you can get but that island is like something other um, and then had the experience of getting into the freezing sea while there as well like in november and december that was quite something so um the harshness of that experience and it helped me relate to the harshness that you know Helen's supposed to be going through mm. yeah Catherine uh, we mentioned earlier that these stories are very much told in in chapters or, or the story is told in chapters um how much um of the full story did you as an actor have access to and how did that change your approach to your character and, and your character's arc such a hopeless memory, but I think we we got the first three and then we got the next three a little bit later, right? Is that insane? No, that's right. I think that's right. Yeah, so that's how that went. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've never really worked in television before. Um, and so I, I've never worked on one story with two directors. I've never not had the whole story when, when I making the decision to be a part of something or um, when we start shooting. So a lot of that was quite new to me. Um, but I think um, having a, a strong sense of where it was going and we talked so much and Dennis wrote me so many really amazing emails explaining things and where it was going and like really everybody participated in such a healthy uh collaborative dialogue that i you know i really felt like um by the time even we started shooting we did weeks of rehearsal before we started shooting really felt like everybody uh had their own job to do but w was very much aligned in the story we were trying to tell and that's just the best way to start a project um uh and and uh yeah it was really really satisfying so um you know it's one of those things where I now think this is what TV is like. And I know that it's not like this at all. This is like a very particular and rare occurrence to have this, this group of people together and uh, incorporating this element of a live event. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be a part of it. And, and I had just an absolute ball doing it. Yeah, I can imagine such a 
with the first foray into television for you, uh, working with a series that is challenging form in every way possible is, is, okay. is uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure it doesn't set a good precedent for the, the next series that uh, you may or may not do. Um, Felix, <laughs> um, question for you in terms of the, the production itself, or sorry, the, the live production. Um, what can you tell us about the planning for that? Um, what can you tell us about, um, obviously in terms of not who's involved, because that might be a spoiler, but um, how is it coming along? Uh, it's fantastic. It's amazing being back on the island uh, from shooting last year. And uh, it's amazing going back, reminding ourselves of the space and gearing up for something that is actually in itself unprecedented, a sort of 12 hour, uh, non-stop, continuous uh, live broadcast. Um, so I uh, hope that you will all come and join us on October the 3rd uh, and, uh, and experience the uh, third part of the third day. Felix, are you there right now? No, I'm back in London. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> I wanted a little peek out the window, if you were. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a fish behind you. Do you realize? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be amazing to have the, the gang back together in such a few small weeks. Watch out oh. for fish, though, Felix. <laughs> I'm not staying in that, uh, in that cottage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I just want to say we're thrilled um, to have this premiering uh, at the Toronto International Film Festival. We're so excited about it. Uh, and I think audiences are going to, um, yeah, feel the exact same way. I was hoping we could end. Um, Dennis, Felix, anything you want to say to Toronto audiences who are about to watch this for the first time? Dennis. Um, I, I don't know, maybe have a drink after or, or, or you know, it, I, we, we accept no response, no uh, responsibility for any psychological damage uh, in, that is enc encountered in the course of this show. I hope you like it. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yes, um, we, we I definitely loved it and uh, I hope they like it as well. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yeah.